The Flight 3 Arleigh Burke destroyer has finally been unveiled. Ingalls Shipbuilding announced on June 27 that the first ship of Flight 3, the Arleigh Burke destroyer, began delivery to the U.S. Navy after completing four sea trials. The Flight 3 was delivered with the most advanced and SPY-6 active phased array radar. At the same time, the Aegis combat system was upgraded to baseline 10. In addition, Ingalls Shipbuilding has four other Flight 3 in various stages of construction, including DDG-128 Ted Stevens, DDG-129 Jeremiah Denton, DDG-131 George M. Neal, and DDG-133 Sam Nunn. The Flight 3 Arleigh Burke destroyer's first ship, Jack H. Lucas, lays its keel in November 2019 and is launched in June 2021. Four sea trials were conducted before and after the ship's first departure from port for sea trials in December of last year. In May, Jack H. Lucas finally completed her final acceptance tests. After delivery to the Navy, the warship will remain at the shipyard for about 120 days. Within a few weeks of completing the Navy's test card, Navy crews began stationing on the warships. I consider the Arleigh Burke class destroyer to be the most successful destroyer program since World War II, as well as for the navies of other nations. It also showed the way for other navies to develop surface ships. In the field of military equipment, the Arleigh Burke class destroyer is fully comparable to the F-16 fighter. It was with the Arleigh Burke class and the Ticonderoga class cruiser at the U.S. Navy constructed the anti-aircraft fire network that invalidated the Soviet saturation attack doctrine. Unlike other navies that used Aegis ships as the main air defense arm of their fleets, the U.S. Navy's Arleigh Burke played the role of a military horse. The Navy has dozens of Arleigh Burke-class destroyers in service, either deployed to the Asia-Pacific region or to the Mediterranean, making them the busiest warships in the U.S. military. Because of this, the Arleigh Burke-class has a very different design philosophy than other Aegis ships. Today, we'll talk about what strengths the Flight 3 Arleigh Burke destroyer has that will allow the budget-constrained Navy to choose to continue building it. Compared to Flight 2, Flight 3's biggest upgrade is the most advanced and SPY-6 active phased array radar. This is an air and missile defense radar developed by Raytheon with multi-mission capability to defend against ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, aircraft, and surface ships simultaneously. Compared to conventional radars, the SPY-6 has a larger scanning range, higher sensitivity, and greater target identification capability. With a detection range of more than 500 kilometers, the SPY-6 is 30 times more sensitive than the current Arleigh Burke-equipped radar and is capable of handling 1,000 air targets simultaneously. As the radar entered the test phase, the sensitivity continued to increase, first to 50 times, then to 70 times, and finally to 100 times. Also under development for the SPY-6 is an ADR mode that will allow it to be used in a multi-base radar with other SPY-6S. This feature is expected to start being applied around 2024. The most important feature of the SPY-6 radar is that it can be customized on demand and has a high degree of expandability. Each array face of the SPY-6 radar is composed of multiple radar modular components. By adding or subtracting modular components, it can be combined into different radar array surfaces according to mission requirements or ship size and can be installed on seven types of combat vessels, including aircraft carriers, amphibious assault ships, destroyers, frigates, and coastal combat ships. The open hardware architecture of this radar is completely different from that of the earlier SPY-1. The modular design facilitates deployment on different ship platforms while also allowing for technology and performance upgrades over the full life cycle of the radar system. 95% of the SPY-6 radar's array modules are composed of several specific structures. Maintenance personnel can replace a failed module in less than 6 minutes with just two tools. The number of special parts has been reduced by 70% compared to the radar on the active Arleigh Burke class destroyers. Much of the technology and software of the SPY-6 radar system is reprogrammable, meaning the SPY-6 radar can respond to new missions and threats with software upgrades, a feature that also makes the SPY-6 family of radars one of the first truly scalable radars in the U.S. military. There are currently four models of SPY-6 V1, V2, V3, and V4, the largest of which V1 will be installed on Flight 3 and V2 on the American-class amphibious assault ships, 
the San Antonio class amphibious transport dock, and the Nimitz class aircraft carrier. V3 will be installed on the Ford class carriers and Constellation class frigates, and V4 will be installed on the Flight 2A Arleigh Burke. The Spy 6, developed by Raytheon Company, will not only replace the Spy 1 but also the SPS 48, SPS 49, and Spy 4, basically unifying the U.S. Navy Surface Fleet's future long-range multifunction radar. The Spy 6 is being developed in conjunction with the RSC, which allows the Spy 6 and the rest of the radars to share a backend and form a dual-band radar. For example, the Flight 3 Arleigh Burke destroyer is equipped with the Spy 6V1 plus the SPQ-9B, a dual-band radar. The Aegis combat system fitted to Flight 3 has been upgraded from Flight 2's Baseline 9 to Baseline 10. The system's data processing capabilities, missile tracking capabilities, and intelligence search capabilities have all been significantly improved. The most distinctive features of the Aegis combat system are the four active phased array radars mounted on the bridge and the accompanying 41 Malawian Quacha's vertical launch system. This is a complete combat system. Flight 3's 41 Malawi and Quacha's vertical launch system is the most comprehensive of the Arleigh Burke class destroyers in terms of the types of missiles it supports. It is equipped with the U.S. Navy's most advanced SM-3 Block 2A missile as well as the SM-6 air defense missile. The former has a range of 1,200 km and a defense altitude of 500 km. Since entering service, the SM-3 Block 2A has been tested six times with a 70% success rate. The standard missile 3 series is a key element of the Navy Area Theater ballistic missile defense and is responsible for defending against the initial and intermediate phases of ballistic missile flight. Some of the hypersonic weapons in the ascent phase are also targets for standard missile 3 defense. The standard missile 3 series also has some anti-satellite capabilities and can attack space targets. In addition, the standard Missile 3 is highly versatile and can be changed to different warheads at any time, depending on the mission. Standard Missile 3 is guided and directed by the Aegis Combat System. This means that surface ships equipped with the Aegis Combat System can basically be equipped with standard Missile 3 series air defense missiles. For long-range air defense operations, the SM-6 Block 1A ultra-long-range air defense missile can be used, with priority given to the SM-6 Block 1B air defense and anti-missile defense missile. The Flight 3 Arleigh Burke destroyer may also become the first U.S. Navy air defense ship to be equipped with ESSM. Compared to the earlier Sea Sparrow, the ESSM has a vastly improved defense range and was designed from the outset with different combat systems and launch platforms in mind. The ESSM can be adapted to 41 Malawian Quachas, 48 Malawian Quachas, and 56 Malawian Quacha's vertical launch systems and can be controlled by the Aegis Combat System equipped with a phased array radar for direct mid-range command to automatically engage multiple targets. According to Raytheon's description, the ESSM can also provide terminal defense against hypersonic weapons. In the close-range air defense mission, although Flight 3 is not equipped with laser weapons, do not rule out the possibility that subsequent missions will not add this type of weapon. In fact, the plans related to Flight 3, Arleigh Burke, have been proposed since 2010. A considerable number of upgrades were made to Flight 2, such as the change to the most advanced and SPY-6 active phased array radar, the all-electric propulsion system, the CIC layout, and the redesign of the weapon platform. These make Flight 3's full load displacement reach 9,709 tons, the limit of displacement reached 10,700 tons, and almost all of Arleigh Burke's redundant design was used up. Therefore, it is also believed that this will be the final, improved version of Arleigh Burke. As a large destroyer developed in the 1980s, the biggest technical highlight of the Arleigh Burke class is that it is equipped with the vertical launching system and the Aegis combat system, which have very strong anti-aircraft and anti-missile capabilities. In order to keep the Arleigh Burke class advanced, the US adopted the strategy of building in batches. Not only surface ships but also U.S. fighters, bombers, and main battle tanks are built in a similar manner, with many commonalities between the different batches. The Arleigh Burke class, with this build strategy, could ensure that several or a dozen ships were upgraded at the same time in each batch, ensuring better economy and cutting design and operating costs in this way.
But since the Flight 3 program was proposed, the US Navy has been facing funding shortfalls. Compared to the earlier design, the actual Flight 3 has undergone constant compromises and downgrades but is still equipped with the most advanced anti-aircraft anti-missile radar and the latest Aegis combat system. After the Flight 3 Arleigh Burke destroyer enters service with the US Navy, it will assume the primary air defense mission of the carrier strike group, and the older Ticonderoga-class cruiser will be phased out. In fact, the Flight 3 Arleigh Burke destroyer is considered the finale of the old era of US Navy surface ships. The Jumwall-class destroyer, which was considered a failure, was more like the beginning of a new era for the Navy. The original Arleigh Burke class was only a low-profile ship used by the US Army to supplement the number of ships, but after several upgrades and the retirement of older ships, the Arleigh Burke class's status skyrocketed. The reason why the US Army chose to build the Jumwall-class destroyer was because the US strategy at the time changed from sea to land, so it started the DD-21 project which was specifically developed for ground attack destroyers. One of the most important pieces of equipment is the advanced naval gun system, which is a bold attempt by the US military. But the US Secretary of Defense at the time canceled this Cold War thinking equipment, along with the Comanche helicopter and Crusader artillery system. However, the US Navy did not abandon the DD-21 program but instead renamed it DD-X, and continued to advance this ground attack destroyer. However, in 2003, the entire program was rejected by the U.S. Secretary of Defense, and the 32-ship program was terminated, resulting in the construction of only three Jumwalt-class ships. The reduction in the number of ships built also led to a steep rise in the unit cost of the Jumwalt-class. But the Jumwalt-class and the U.S. next-generation cruiser CGX are highly similar in technology, which means the two warship programs will affect each other. After Obama was elected president, he began to control U.S. military spending, and in 2010, the U.S. next-generation cruiser CGX was canceled outright. However, the end of the CGX project also left the Ticonderoga-class cruiser without a successor. The U.S. Army had to select a successor from the Arleigh Burke class and the Jumbo Walter class in order to fill the gap in this area. So the Flight 3 Arleigh Burke destroyer was developed because it was the most cost-effective way to do so. To save money, Flight 3 also reduced performance significantly. Except for the radar, which was brand new, the remaining equipment was appropriated from the original Arleigh Burke class or other surface ships, which greatly reduced the development time. So in my opinion, the Flight 3 Arleigh Burke destroyer is a half-new, half-old destroyer built by the US to make up for the vacancy created by the bulk retirement of the Ticonderoga-class cruiser after the cancellation of the Jumwall-class and CGX programs. The old refers to the fact that the hull structure of Flight 3 is basically the same as that of the current Arleigh Burke-class, which still inherits the rear-tilting polyhedral light mass design. The new refers to the new generation of active phased array radar, significantly improving anti-aircraft and anti-missile capabilities. Relatively speaking, the US Navy has the world's strongest carrier-based aircraft, so the primary tasks of cruisers and destroyers are air defense and anti-missile, the secondary task is ground strike, and anti-ship combat is ranked last. The Flight 3 Arleigh Burke destroyer also inherited this mission pattern, combining the N Spy 6 1 with the Aegis Combat System Baseline 10 and carrying the SM-3 Block 2A anti-missile defense bomb with a range of 2,500 km, the SM-6 anti-aircraft missile with a range of 400 km, the Evolved Sea missiles, and the Evolved Sea Sparrow missile, bringing Flight 3's air defense and anti-missile capabilities to a whole new level. Flight 3's sea-based air defense and anti-missile performance and coordinated engagement performance far exceed that of the US Navy's Ticonderoga-class cruiser. Well, that's it for this film. We'll see you next time.